Hello everyone, this is Danielle Galvan Gomez and today I'm going to teach you how to make and bind your own sketchbooks and notebooks. I'll be teaching two different methods for binding. The first is a Coptic stitch with a hardbound cover, which is the first book that you see, and the second is a soft cover Japanese style stab binding. For this project, you're going to need paper, so I'm going to use the paper that we used last time and I also use computer paper for the second book that we have. You're going to need some kind of hard cardboard so I'm using this old Sephora box, a box cutter. You'll also need um, a ruler or a straight edge to do some small measurements, an exacto knife. Um, I would also use some kind of thread. This is embroidery floss so you can use linen or cotton floss um, or thread for this project. This is a stitching awl. You're going to need something with a sharp edge that you can use to make the holes in your paper and binding material. You'll need beeswax um, and then you'll need a needle that is how you're going to be doing all your stitching so I'd recommend like a um, an upholstery needle and you'll also need a thimble um, if you feel like you want to protect your fingers when you start sewing. So we're going to start with our embroidery floss. I got white floss um, it's cotton, it's very absorbent, and I decided I wanted to dye it. And we can actually use the dyes that we made before to dye this floss. So we can make really unique colors and threads. So I, go, I soaked all of my dye and left it in a refrigerator with my embroidery floss overnight. The next day I took them all out. You can see they have a lot of color, and I washed them out. And put a little bit of soap to get all the excess dye taken off. When you wash it, it should not have any color when you squeeze it anymore. The water should just be clear and that's when you know it's ready to be laid out to dry. So I repeated this process, um, rinsing, washing with soap, and making sure that there was no more pigment left that could run. And that's when I knew that all my thread was ready and I repeated this process and then I went ahead and left them out. We have our red cabbage, our beets, raspberries, avocado seed, turmeric, blackberry, and blueberry dyed threads. I then untangled them all and left them out to dry for about 20 minutes. You can leave them for as long as you want, but it took mine about 20 minutes. You can see they dried a little lighter than their original color. And then I got my beeswax because in order to use them for binding, you're going to want them to be waxed. It helps keep them from tangling. So I got just a block of beeswax and I made um, made it so I could run my thread through and then I just ran it through a couple of times. When I was done, I got my Sephora box and I broke it into little pieces and this is what I'm going to wrap my thread around so it doesn't tangle. So I, I just wrapped it around this, you can use a piece of cardboard, anything that you have. Um, and I made kind of a, a spool from that and the last thing I did is I made a little notch in the top of this so that I could tuck the end of my thread in and it would hold it in place so every time I cut a piece it would come come out evenly and here's all the colors that we made and that I wrapped and then we're gonna go ahead and get our paper prepared so I went ahead and measured my paper. They all came out a little differently. So this one was about 13 inches. So I cut my paper in half. So I cut it at six and a half inches. And then from there, I was able to um, fold it and make four pieces of paper from each piece. Uh, after that, after I cut all my pieces, I cut the edges off so that they would be even and they wouldn't be too, they wouldn't crumble at the end. And once I cleaned up the edges and had all of my pieces of paper arranged into smaller signatures, which are the parts of a book that the pages are held by. Now that our pages have been cut to size and trimmed, we're going to start making our book cover. So I used this old Sephora box as my book cover because it was a lot thicker than my paper and it would be good for a hardcover. So I went ahead and measured um, it to my pages. It should be about half an inch longer than on your pages at least. So I used a box cutter to create, if my pages are about six and a half inches, it should be at least seven inches. You can even make it um, seven and a half inches if you want a little bit more room um, or eight inches. It depends on how much book cover you want 
So I made one for each side of my book that are equal size. And once these were cut, I wrapped them in some wrapping paper I had, this purple wrapping paper, and then prepared them to be bound. So the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that we make um, equal size holes in our paper and in our both book covers so that we can sew. Basically, binding a book is a form of sewing. So we want to make them even and we want them to align. So I'm using this awl which is a tool that people use for stitching and sewing and, and making different crafts. And I'm making these holes through my book cover and into my um, paper. And I made them about half an inch apart, to a little bit more, maybe like three fourths of an inch apart with my ruler. So once I make all the holes in the cover and through the paper with this all, and you can use anything sharp, um, you can use a nail and a hammer even if you have that anything that will make a clean a clean hole but it shouldn't be too too big it should just be big enough that your thread and needle can go through so thread your needle which means putting our thread through the through the eye of the needle which is the open part of the needle on the back the, on the other side and we're gonna start putting it through our um, paper so it's pretty simple you just stitch through your paper and then follow the holes that you've created. So it should go first through your paper and then down through um, this hole and then you should go back again and make a knot. So you're basically going in a big loop and you're looping the paper and the cover together. You can see I'm gonna do it one more time because this is our first stitch and it should make a little, almost like a little ball. And that's our first stitch. So I found you can go in the crease if you have two pieces of paper, which is what you see I'm doing here. Eventually I switched to going directly through the two pieces of paper because the paper we made is so thick. If you use a thinner kind of paper, you can use this method of going through the, um, the crease in the book, which is where the two pages meet. But it's a little harder when you have thicker paper so I'd recommend just going straight through vertically through the paper and stitching directly in the same method so keep repeating this you're gonna go up and down and through and make a loop and keep making knots and these stitches alongside so that your paper is secure to your book cover so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process that I did um, sped up so I went all the way down the line, I just went in a direct line, I started on one end and went all the way to the other, um, and went back through, knotted it, went in, went back through, knotted it, um, went through the paper, went through the hole that we made, looped, knotted it, until I reached the end. And once you reach the end, you can get your next piece of paper and repeat this process again except instead of looping through the cover, we're going to be looping through our previous knots. So we're doing the same process, but this time we're going through our knot rather than our paper. So you can see that I'm making my loop and just stitching it together. It's almost the pattern that you make or the movement that you make when you're tying your shoelaces, except you're doing it with a needle instead of um, your shoes. So I'm going to repeat this process again. You can see I'm running out of thread and I just went ahead and got a different color thread and threaded it through my needle and started the process again by knotting and, and going through. It looks a little messy because our paper is really thick and if you remember it kind of crumbles. It doesn't have a clean edge because we handmade it. So if you don't like that look, I do, you can get just paper from a sketchbook or computer paper. Any kind of paper you have lying around will work for this process as long as you do what I said, which is um, make equally sized holes that align with all the parts that you're trying to stitch together. So I kept changing my threads so that I would have different colors as the book progressed. And uh, the last thing I did was put on the cover, the second cover. So it's the same process as um, for the rest of the book, you thread the needle through the first hole and you knot it. So 
So you bring it down and around. And I did it a couple, I did it two or three times because, um, especially for the covers, because the cover weighs more and it has a thicker weight and because you're going to presumably be opening it more, it's a little bit more important that you make a more robust um, stitch here. So doing it a couple of times is a good idea. You don't want to do it as much with your paper because it can cause the paper to rip. So I would say that this is probably the most um, stitching you should do is on the cover. It's okay to do it a couple of times. I wouldn't recommend doing it with your paper because you don't want to rip the paper. You just want to do enough so that it binds together um, with, with the rest of your pages and with your cover. So I did the same thing, I went back and forth, and you're going back and forth um, as if you're reading from one line to the next. So you just follow the path that the book takes and that your needle and thread takes. And then I knotted it and um, really tight at the end, this is our last stitch, and I cut it with my X-Acto knife and then I had a stitched book. So this is the final product for our stitch, this is called a Coptic stitch. There are different methods of stitching. You can look at a kettle stitch, you can look at a lot of different kinds of stitches, but I find this is one of the sturdiest ones, especially for me. I like doing um, drawings and paintings and small paintings in this book, so I want something that will be able to lie flat. And You can see it allows your pages to lie flat when you open it, um, for the most part. These are a little thick, so they're sticking up, but it's really easy to draw and paint in. So the other method that I'm going to be teaching you is a stab binding, and um, this is a Japanese style stab bound book. Um, I'm going to be making only five holes with this, and so what you're going to want to do is get a piece of paper and fold it in half three times. So one, two, three, fold it in half. Then you unfold it, and you'll see that it has made these lines, that these creases form, and you're going to mark on every other line until you have five dots. And these are going to be where you're stitching. So I went ahead and did the same thing. I got my awl and I created holes. Um, I used computer paper for this project, so I aligned, I used what I made uh, as a guide for stab, stabbing the rest of my pages. So below is the rest of my computer pages, and I used this piece of paper that I folded and marked as a guide for each page. So I'm not actually going to bind with this, but I'm going to use it to prepare my pages. So as you can see, I stabbed five holes in each um, unit. You'll probably have to get your pages maybe in about five to ten pages stab each because you don't want to build too many pages underneath or you won't be able to stab without breaking your all. So just do a few at a time and line them up. I used my uh, my cutting board has lines on it, so you can use the lines on your cutting board or a straight edge like a ruler to make sure that you're doing this um, evenly. I then also use my Sephora box to make these um, little edges for my book so they're a little bit firmer on the edge and these this is going to be part of my binding, something that I added. And then as a cover I just used some construction paper and I cut it to size for my computer paper and then I did the same thing I stabbed it using my guide and now all my pages and um, my board is ready to be stitched together so you can see I used that to give it a little bit of um, uh, make it so it's a little bit more solid so now we're going to begin stitching so cut your paper or divide your paper in about half and you're going to do your first stitch in the middle of the five holes and about halfway through your paper. So go ahead and pull your needle through. You're going to go bottom to top and you're going to have some a little bit of excess thread there. Tuck that in towards your paper and just leave that. That's going to be for our last stitch in the book and we're not going to think about it again until we're done. So then thread it through the top of your binding and then wrap around and go underneath and go completely through the entire thing so all your paper um, the piece of the Sephora box that I'm using for my binding the construction paper both pieces of paper that we divided up 
to put your thread completely through it. And now we're going to complete our first stitch. So you can see it should, and this is with our turmeric thread, it's like a beautiful yellow, bright yellow thread. So there's our first stitch. And then we're going to go ahead and repeat this process on the rest of our um, holes. We have four other holes. So just go ahead and go to the next one. You can go either direction and go down. So you're always going to be wanting to go um, through the hole at least twice in the same direction. And that's the way that you make a stitch. So you go through once and then you loop your... Um, needle around and do it again so that you make a loop and the loop is what is going to be used as the binding so you can see that I'm going up and down and up again and forming these loops which are our binding and on the edge what you can do is um, I wrapped it around the edge there so that it would give a little bit extra support and went up and through my last hole again and that way it made kind of this um, this corner a little bit more secure and then I'm going to do my last few stitches so by the end of this process everything should have a stitch through and across it so you see it almost looks like there's one thread going through but it's actually different stitches that you're going back and forth um, I had a loose thread so that's what I cut and then what you're going to want to do is find the middle where you had your um, your thread before. This is the thread that we left at the beginning. So now we're going to do our final stitch. So go to that middle hole and bring your needle through and all your remaining thread through. And once you do that, you can cut it. You can trim it so that it's just the two pieces of thread. And then you're going to tie them together and knot them. And that is how you finish off your book. I knotted it two or three times. And then I trimmed my thread with my X-Acto knife. So that I didn't need that excess thread. You can leave it if you want, but I, I want it to, it to be a little neater and to, to trim it off. And then once you do that, you can tuck that in a little bit to the fold of the book, the crease and you have your kind of simple stab bound book that you can also use for writing or sketching or as a notepad. Because we use computer paper and not handmade paper, these pages are really flat, so notice the difference. So now this is our, our final product. We have two different kinds of books that we can use for writing or sketching, and it can be really difficult to do this the first time. But don't give up because the more you practice, the easier it will get, and you can actually make your own personalized books at home. Thank you for watching this video. For more arts and music instruction, please check out William Grant Still Art Center's social media pages.